Remember spending hours scrolling through YouTube hunting for that one perfect tutorial to help you figure out the thing you needed? Yeah, well those days are over. Done, kaput. Well, almost. Think I'm crazy? I just played around with the latest AI tutor and is this the signal for the death of tutorials and the end of information-based videos as we know them? Yeah, it kind of looks that way. I just watched a video from Tiny Technical Tutorials as well as Ripple Trainings, Can Gemini 2 Teach Final Cut Pro? They were interesting videos and definitely worth checking out. I'll link them down below where in the Ripple Training one, Mark goes through and gets Gemini Studio to walk through Final Cut Pro and doing simple tasks. And it definitely flubs and it definitely has its uh, quirks and it doesn't really understand Final Cut Pro yet, but with its natural language and its clear understanding that they're working in Final Cut Pro and the tasks that he was asking them, it understood that. And in the tiny technical tutorials video, Gemini was able to go through and understand that it is working in Excel. And there was another example in Photoshop and it was able to walk through the basic concepts of color correcting this image and where everything was. And beyond Photoshop, they also did a tutorial about Amazon Web Services and how to set up the backend stuff. And as someone that is constantly learning these applications and you know finding all these little hidden tricks and things that are built into these applications that it's very hard to stumble across, is fascinating about what it can do. And just to give you a brief overview of what the capabilities are, it's aistudio.google.com. And it's as simple as just logging in and then you can share your screen and Gemini is able to understand what is on your screen and you can ask it questions about how to do the next steps. What application am I looking at right now? You're looking at the video editing software DaVinci Resolve. It seems to be showing a timeline, scopes, and color wheels. Are you sure it's DaVinci Resolve? Yes, I'm quite sure it's DaVinci Resolve. Interface including the color wheels and the timeline, are characteristic of the software. This is actually Final Cut Pro. <laughs> it's Final Cut Pro. I apologize for the mistake. How do I delete clips from Final Cut Pro? I can help you with that. To delete a clip in Final Cut Pro, select the clip in the timeline, then press the delete key. Is there anything else you need help with? Yes, uh, if I wanted to color correct this clip, how would I do that? Sure, I can help you with that. To color correct a clip in Final Cut Pro, you would typically use the color board or color wheels in the inspector panel, which is visible on the right side of the screen. You can make adjustments to things like exposure, saturation, and color balance there. Does that help? Yeah, how would I access those tools? Okay, I understand. You can access the color correction tools by selecting the clip in the timeline and then clicking the color button in the top right of the inspector panel. The color board should then appear and you will be able to make the necessary adjustments. And where's the inspector panel? The inspector panel is the area on the right side of the screen. It has the title inspector at the very top. I don't see it right now. Okay, I can help you with that. Make sure you have a clip selected in the timeline and then you should see the inspector panel on the right side of your screen. Is it visible now? No, it's not visible. Okay, I see. Sometimes the inspector panel can be hidden. Try clicking the inspector button in the top right corner of the Final Cut Pro window. This should toggle the inspector panel's visibility. Is it showing now? What does the inspector panel toggle look like? The inspector panel toggle in the top right corner of the Final Cut Pro window looks like a small box with three horizontal lines inside of it. It's located just below the minimize button. Okay, I have the inspector panel open, but I don't see the color. Okay, I can help you with that. Now that the inspector panel is open, you should see a number of tabs at the top of the inspector panel. Click the tab that has the word color on it, and the color tools should appear. Is it visible now? Yes, it is. As a tool that would help people get through a lot of the simple step-by-step -step processes of an application, be it Final Cut Pro, be it DaVinci Resolve, be it Photoshop, or anything that is readily available on YouTube, which Gemini would have been trained on, this is going to be a huge leap forward. Now, there are a lot of things when I was testing this that just, it, 
it didn't know. Like for instance, it thought it was looking at DaVinci Resolve because the vector scope and the color wheels were up. So, but I was able to correct it and say, I'm using Final Cut Pro. It would definitely fall on the user to have to say, I'm, can you help me with this Photoshop sequence? How do I do this uh, instance? And I tried it with a few things. And the same thing comes up with every iteration of AI that I've used up to this point, uh, generative AI or uh, multimodal or language, large language models. But ultimately it comes across as a very confident bullshit artist where it knows a lot of stuff, but once you start pushing it beyond what is readily available, what it could have learned on, it really doesn't know that. I tried to get it to help me set up a screen replacement in DaVinci Resolve and it got pretty far along, but it missed so many steps along the way. It, it wasn't setting the reference frames. It wasn't telling me to put the markers in the right place. And it just kind of quickly went through it. But I can see this in a year or two, or maybe even sooner the way AI kind of goes, is that this could be something that, that if someone is stuck on a particular application and they just want to get to the next step, they can just share their screen and have a, the AI recognize what they're trying to do. And with a few like, oh, I'm trying to do this in very natural language, just explain it and then get past that one little hurdle that they're stuck on. It, it would be like calling someone that you know that is really well-versed in the application or the thing that you're trying to do and just ask them like, oh, I'm trying to do this. How would, how, how would you fix this? And the speed that AI has been progressing in the last couple of years, and I can see it being super precise and helpful in those situations. And it could be for almost any application. So like I, I'm actually really excited about this, but my, my biggest worry in the short term or even in the like medium term is that, that it's really going to start giving the wrong information because a lot of the information that it was probably trained on isn't correct or isn't the right process to do it, or even remotely close to what, what it's trying to do it. So the whole system would come across as very confident, but ultimately it's a confident bullshit artist. And it's going to make stuff up and it is still trying to make the best guess for what is the next step based on what it kind of learned. But like anything else, it's going to improve with leaps and bounds and one day it will be able to understand it and really be able to help a lot of people. And very soon we'll just be able to share our screens and the AI agent will know how to troubleshoot the thing that we're trying to do. And it's probably gonna to get to a point where it's just gonna be built into the OS that you're working with and it'll just know. And it'll know contextually the app that you've been using for the last couple of hours and what you've been trying to accomplish. And it'll be like, yeah, I know what you're trying to do and I know how to fix that. Let's get it done. It's like, oh, you missed these steps and you missed that. Like if it's kind of running in the background, it's going to be kind of a lifesaver for people that are trying to create or to do anything using all the applications that are out there. A lot of these applications are becoming more and more powerful. And with this layer over top, with this permanent tutor or the customer service built into these OSs that's going to come, that's going to be a huge leap forward for people learning and having that barrier to entry to just be eliminated. A year from now, someone can say, hey, help me make my first YouTube video. It'll walk someone through exactly what they're looking for, for the exact thing that they're trying to create a YouTube video. Instead of searching through tons and tons of tutorials online, it's just gonna be able to walk them through on a one-to-one -one personalized basis. And that's kind of exciting because it's gonna do uh, multiple things. First, it's going to it's going to save all us people that are very technical from being our family's IT service. Anytime they get a new device, you'll just be able to ask, oh, why is my phone doing this thing? How do I turn off the setting or how do I turn on that setting? And just being able to talk to it naturally in that way. From my perspective, this is going to be one of those huge things for the teaching and online learning space that is just going to... Uh, it's going to melt a lot of people's brains and it's just another case of how AI has come to essentially dismantle a whole industry that has been huge and growing for the last decade and AI now is coming to kind of 
sweep the rug for a lot of these people. So is the era of online tutorials and online learning coming to an end? Seemingly so. We're already at a point where Gemini is being used to do AI generated video summaries. So will we have to watch videos at all in a little bit where this does a summary of, of what the video is. But if you want, you can go to, you can grab a video, the link, go to Gemini, type in analyze this video and it'll give you a quick summary of what that video is. Then you, you can just ask, give me the key takeaways from this video and you just hit send. So we're at a point where we're not going to need to watch these videos. But I made this point to, uh, to my Discord group and we're talking about how analyzing the video is one thing. We literally went from blogs to videos and I think it's gonna be hard for people to go back to reading after videos are available. So this may actually evolve into a quick video summary of the key points but you can always just click the three icons and then just press listen. And you can have AI speak it to you. So is this just another blow to tutorials and information-based videos where people aren't actually going to watch these videos anymore. So is it going to be worth it for creators to keep creating this kind of content where it can just be condensed down to its key takeaways instead of having someone watch these kind of videos. So with tutorials kind of gone and information-based videos, are we seeing a point where a whole nother industry is about to get dismantled? Yeah, it seems like it is. But there is one great takeaway from this entire thing is that we're not gonna have to be IT customer service for our parents and our kids every time they get a new device. High five for that. Anyways. What do you think? Do you think that this is going to ravage the tutorial and information video based space? Is this something else to be worried about? Do we need to learn some new skills in the tutorial space? I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you guys think. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.